Hello learners, welcome back to the course on construction methodology. In this lecture, we'll try to understand the bending moment of a beam and how the reinforcement is provided in a beam. So this is how a beam looks. So this is how a beam looks. So let us say this is a beam and it is supported on a two column. So this is how it looks. Let us say this is a fixed support. This, let us say this is a fixed support and this is a beam which is kept over that, right? So we'll try to see. Now we have understood how the uh, reinforcement is given in a beam. So according to that understanding, let us say on the top, we are providing three bars of 16 diameter. We are providing a uh, three bars of 16 diameter. Since it is a longitudinal view, we are going to see only one bar. In the cross section, we are going to see one, two and three dot that we have, that we know that. In the same way, in the bottom, I'm going to provide again three bar of 16 diameter. Let us say I'm going to provide a 16 diameter three bar. So how it's going to look? Uh, your beam is going to look like this. So I'm going to provide one, two and three at the top and one, two and three at the bottom. So this is how a uh, beam looks so far. And let's, let us say all these are the stirrups. These are the stirrups near the support. Uh, the spacing is very less. Let us say it is 100 center to center spacing. And even from here to the support, it is 100 center to center spacing. And from center onwards, the spacing has increased to 150 center to center, 150 center to center, 150 center to center. Right. So we'll try to see the logic behind this as well. And this is an extra bar what we have provided. Let us say here we are providing an extra bar and let us say we are providing a 16 diameter two extra bar. In the same way on the right support, we are providing 16 diameter two bar extra on the right support. And this is my uh, center portion. This is a you know a bottom bar. And again, we have provided two bars of 20 diameter in the second layer, right? All these things is understood to us. Uh, already we have seen the already we have seen how to understand the drawings in the previous lectures. So this is very easy to understand now. So we'll try to see how the bending moment of a beam will happen. So this is how a bending moment happens, right? So what will happen when you when you apply a load on this particular beam? Let us say I'm applying a load on this particular beam. So based on that load, what will happen? The beam is trying to bend like this. What will happen near the support? From here, what is what will happen? The beam will try to go up. This is how the beam try to go up. That is called as hogging bending moment. And from here to here, from the center region, the beam is going to sag, right? The beam is going to hog here. And from this, it's going to sag here. Again, from here, it's going to hog. So this is called as hogging moment. This is also called as hogging moment. And this is called as sagging moment. Also, we can say this as negative bending moment. Since it is going up, we call it as negative. So that is called as negative bending moment. Or we can call this as hogging bending moment. And even this is also called as negative bending moment or it is called as hogging bending moment because the beam is going up. Whereas here, the beam has gone down, right? Here, the, it is called as sagging because the beam is sagging here. So this is called as sagging bending moment or it is called as positive. Since it has gone up, we call it as negative. Since it has come down, it is called as positive bending moment. So we know that this is how the beam is going to bend when we are going to apply the load. So we know that as an engineer, I know that when a load is coming on this particular beam, the be this is a behavior of a beam. But I don't want this behavior to happen, right? Because I want my beam to stay in its position. I don't want the beam to go this way. So I know that it's going to go in this way because of that reason, what I'm going to do, if it is going up, what I have to, what I have to do, I have to stop it, right? I have to stop it going up. That is why what I do, I provide a top steel here. If I'm providing a top steel here, what will happen? This beam will not go up. And I know that because of the load, this particular portion, this center portion is going to come down. If it's going to come down, then what I have to do, I have to stop it from coming down. So that is why I'm going to provide a bottom steel here. That is why you can see a red steel one and also a blue steel has gone up to here. Again, here in this part, what is going to happen? It's again going to come up, right? Because of the load coming on this, it's going to hog here. That means your beam is going to go up. If the beam is going to go up, I know that uh, in order to stop that, I need to provide the top reinforcement. That is why I'm going to provide a top steel here, right? You can see here, right? I provided a yellow color steel as well as a blue color steel has come here. Any of the blue color steel that is 16 diameter three bar will go throughout, but that will cover even this part. Along with that, I'm providing an, another extra bar of 16 diameter two bar here because I'm providing it on the topper side because I know that the beam is going to hog like this. In order to stop this hog, I'm going to provide more steel. So what will happen because of this, the beam is not going to hog like this. The same uh, reason holds good here. I provided 16 diameter. I provided a 16 diameter three bar at the top, the blue one up to here. And over the time in the second layer, I'm going to provide another 16 diameter two bar here. Again, I know that I'm providing it on the top side because it's going to hog here. So in order to stop this hog, I have to provide a more but steel. If I'm providing more steel here, this is not going to hog like this. The beam will rest in its position. The beam will stay in its position. In the same logic holds good here. I know that 
the bottom portion is going to go down if it is going go if it, if it is trying to go down i have to stop it from trying to go down so what i'm going to do i'm going to provide a 16 diameter 3 bar here that is throughout in the bottom along with that i know that since it's going it's going to sag i'll provide another 20 diameter of 2 bar here as a result of that what will happen this sagging won't happen so this is a logic behind providing the bar that is the reason whenever you look into the drawing you'll go, you are going to get more steel at the support right you are going to get a 16 diameter 3 bar along with that you are going to get an extra bar of 16 diameter 2 bar that is because of hogging moment is created here again you are going to get a 16 diameter 2 bar and uh, yeah another 16 diameter 3 bar at the top because hogging moment is created here again here you are going to provide 20 diameter 2 bar and 16 diameter 3 bar so this is the logic behind providing the reinforcement in the beam and this is what we need to understand but another thing that strikes our mind is that why is that this stirrups what you can see right these are the stirrups these stirrups are very closely spaced up to this distance again these stirrups are close very i mean they are closed um, closely up to here but whereas in the center portion look at here the stirrups are uh, not spaced closely but they are of uh, let us say they are like 150 center to center 150 center to center and so on so what is the reason behind this now we'll try to understand that so before that, this is how a beam bends, right? So let us say I'm here, this guy is applying a load on this because, and these are the support, okay? And let us say this is one support, this is second support, and this is third support. Because of this, what is happening? Look at this position. Since he's applying a load, this is a behavior of a beam. So it's going to come up here near the, near the support, it's going up. Whereas near the span, like this is the center portion, it's going to sag. Again, it's going to hog like this. Near the support, it's going to hog. hog. Again, this is going to sag here. Again, it's going to hog here. So this is the behavior of the beam. So I, I, when, I, when I put a load on my structure, I don't want this behavior, right? If this behavior happens, then the building is not serviceable. I cannot stay inside that building because of the deflection of this beam. So I don't want this beam to happen like this. I want my beam to stay in its position. Since I know that it's going to hog like this or sag like this, I'm an engineer. I know that it's going to do like this. So I'm going to provide a extra bar near the support because it's going to come up. So in order to lift it, in order to stop that lifting, I'll provide extra bar at the top. That is why 16 diameter 2 bar and 16 diameter 3 bar at the support. The same reason holds good here. Since it's going to come up, I'm going to provide another 16 diameter 2 bar and, uh, you know, yeah, 16 diameter 3 bar here. And it's going to sag here, right? So this sagging has to be stopped. That is why I provide a bottom bar of uh, 16 diameter 3 and let us say 20 diameter 2 and 16 diameter 3 same thing holds good here this is a continuous span but whereas i have shown i have shown only a single span let us say will not consider this only this span i have shown it in my drawing so this is the logic behind that yeah so quickly we'll get to get into that particular uh, thing where, why the shirts are closely spaced and why it is spaced at a greater distance in the center so this is how a beam looks. These are the stirrups. We'll try to concentrate on the stirrups, right? So let us say this is a beam, right? Always the shear force happens from the face of the column. The shear force happens from the face of the column. Shear force in the sense, this beam will try to cut, right? If you take a scissor and if you try to cut a paper, that is you're applying a shear force to that. It's shear is nothing but a cut. So this particular beam is not going to get cut from here. It's going to cut from here. This is a critical section. The face of the column, the face of the column is a critical section for this particular column. I'm but for this particular beam. So this beam is going to get cut from here only. That is why I've drawn the line from this outer support to this outer support. And let us say the shear force is 100 kN here and the shear force is 100 kN. From where I'm going to get this 100 kN? Anyway, we have seen that, right? Uh, I'll go back to that Excel sheet if you can remember. Again, that 100 kilonewton we are going to get from design, right? Look at this. This is a shear force, what I have designed. Let us say I have designed it for 100 kilonewton. So this is shear force I'm designing. For this shear force, this is a reinforcement I need to provide. I need to provide 8 mm bar of two legs straight up at 300 center to center spacing. But 300 practically we don't give. So instead of 8 mm, try to do, uh, we'll try to do 10 mm. What will happen? No. So this won't work out. Let us say we are going to provide four legs at 8 mm. Yeah, that's fine. Six mm is not available. That is fine. We'll try to go with the two legged only. Yeah, it's fine. So let us say I'm providing a hundred kilonewton of shear force to this particular beam. The same thing I mentioned it here. So that is why this is a shear force. It is it acts as the support, and this is another shear force here, hundred kilonewton. So we'll try to join this. All these things we know from structure analysis and strength of materials concept. 
So this is how the variation of the shear force happens, right? Here near the support, the shear force is maximum. Near the support, the shear force is maximum. Once the shear force tries to come here, from 100, it has come to 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, and this is zero. From here, it will go to the minus. So from here, this is called a zero kilonewton. I mean, this is zero shear force. And wherever the shear force is zero, the bending moment will be maximum, right? That we know because this is how the beam was bending, right? The beam was bending like this. That is why, because the shear force is zero here, if the shear force is zero, the bending moment will be maximum. And wherever the shear force is maximum, the bending moment will be zero there. That also we have seen because by the time, it's a negative reinforcement. Like if, if you observe it, this is how the beam was, you know, uh, bending. And by the time it reached here, it was zero here. From here, it has increased. Again, from here, it has gone to zero. From here, it has increased. So that is a negative moment. But by the time that it reaches here, it was zero. The bending moment was zero. So if a shear force is maximum at that particular region, your bending moment will be zero. And wherever the shear force is zero, the bending moment will be maximum then. That we, also, that we saw, right? So let us say this is 100 here and this is 50 kilonewton somewhere here. Similarly, this is 100 here. By the time you reach here, it is a 50 kilonewton. So we'll try to connect with that. So this, this stirrup is here and I've drawn a line here. Let us say this is 50 kilonewton. And let us say from here to here, this is 50 kilonewton. And whatever is from here, it is 40, 30, 20, 10, and this is zero. Again, same thing holds good here. 40, 30, 20, 10, and zero. This is how your shear force is going to vary, right? So here the shear force is more. Here the shear force is more up to which distance, let us say from here to here, from here to here, my shear force is, you know, uh, varying from 100 to 50 kilonewton. So what I'm going to do, I know the shear force is more here. If the shear force is more, I need to provide more stirrups. More stirrups can be provided by placing at the lesser distance. So that is the reason of what I'm doing, what I'm doing is from here to here at till this distance till the uh, you know shear force is 50 kilonewton here i'm going to provide my stirrups at a let us say this is 8 mm stirrup i'm going to provide 8 mm stirrup at 100 mm center to center spacing similarly from here to here i'm going to provide 8 mm stirrup at 100 mm center to center spacing but whereas from here to here my shear force is coming down right from 40 30 20 0 it has come down so since the shear force itself is less less number of stirrups is required if less number of stirrups is to be provided, then the spacing has to be increased, right? If spacing is increasing, then area of steel will be less. If area of steel is less, number of stirrups required will be less. If number of stirrups required will be less, that means the shear force is less. And that we can see it from here, 50, 40, 30, 20, 0. And here, here according to the mathematics, according to the logic, you don't have to provide any shear uh, stirrups here because since it is zero kilonewton, so there is no point in providing a uh, stirrups, but the, but that but that is according to mathematics. But practically, that is not possible because you need to hang these two rebar, right? Only then you can keep this. Uh, if you want to hang this uh, top bar and bottom bar, you need someone to support that. So this stirrups is going to support that. So mathematically, don't require, but practically, that is not possible. That is why what we do, we try to increase the spacing here. That is the reason. Whenever we see the drawings, we see. What will happen? The center is 150 center to center, 150 center to center, 150 center to center. And near the support, it will be 100 center to center, 100 center to center, 100 center to center. So this is the logic behind, you know, uh, providing the stirrups in the um, beam. But again, there is one more logic behind this. That is from earthquake point of view, we need to do. But this is also a logic behind that. Uh, near the support, the shear force will be maximum. As a result of that, more number of stirrups will come. More number of stirrups will come. But uh, near the center, it is uh, less uh, shear force. As a result of that, we are going to increase the spacing. So this is a logic behind that. Uh, we'll try to see according to the drawing only. You can check with this drawing. Look at the drawing. What they've given, they've mentioned you have to provide 8 mm stirrup at 150 center to center spacing up to this length. Again, from this support to here, you have to provide 8 mm bar of 150 center to center spacing. That is for stirrups. Whereas in the center region, he's using 8 mm bar itself, but from 150 has gone to 200 center to center spacing. So that is a logic. With that logic, they have given this drawing. That is a one logic. The second logic is from uh, earthquake point of view, because uh, if you're doing a ductile detailing, uh, according to that, we need to do this uh, zone, you know, more ductile. That is the reason we give 100 mm closely spaced, 100 mm closely spaced. And same logic holds good here for the uh, bending moment point of view. The top still you can provide, you can see here, you're providing 16 diameter two bar here, but near the support, you're providing 16 diameter two plus two bars of 16 diameter that is additional. Same here, 12 diameter two bar, you're providing additional because the bending moment is, I mean, the negative bending moment is more here. Because of that, we need to provide additional bar near the support. So that is why we are providing additional bar near the support. Whereas look at this, 
here what will happen here uh, your sagging moment is going to happen the beam is going to bend down as a result of that what will happen we are providing a 16 diameter two bar that is throughout it is going and then in the second layer look at this additional right addl means additional you're going to provide 12 diameter two bar additional near the center region why why at the center region only because the bending moment is more here the bending moment is i mean the sagging bending moment is more here now since the beam is going to sag like this i need to stop that sagging so i'm going to provide more steel here that is why i'm providing another 12 diameter of two bar extra now the and now one more question arises why is that this entire bar in the second region you can observe right so this is 12 of 12 diameter here it has stopped only up to here it has not gone all the way it has not gone all the way right we'll try to see it in this way yeah yeah we'll try to see this look at this beam right this is what i was speaking this 16 diameter 3 bar has gone all the way right up to this full support it has gone but whereas this 20 diameter bar is only stopped up to here and it is stopped up to here it has not gone the full length what is the reason behind this the reason behind this is again that the bending moment because my positive bending moment right this is a positive bending moment it is only up to here by the time it goes from here it's not it's not a positive one it has gone to the negative bending one that is negative here right for this to counteract this negative, I don't require bottom steel. I require top steel. That is why I'm providing a top steel here. The same reason holds good here. By the time it reaches here, it is sagging only. By the time it goes from here, from here it goes, it is a negative bending moment. If it is a negative bending moment, I need to provide top steel. That is why I'm providing top steel here. So this rebar need not go to the entire length, need not go the en entire length because sagging moment is uh, what you call is uh, is more in this portion only right from here to here your sagging moment is more that is why what i'm going to do this bar i'm going to stop only up to here huh. if i if i take the bar to the full length then it's not a problem you can provide it but as an engineer i need to make my structure safe and also i need to take care of the economy if i'm going to provide this bar for, for the full length for the full length what will happen you're, you're providing more steel if you're providing, see, if it is a one or two beam, it doesn't matter. Imagine you have more like 50, 60 beams and the length of the beam is like six meter and all. Then you're providing more steel. If more steel is provided, unnecessary, we are providing the steel. So the cost of the building will increase. So as an engineer, safety is my first. That already I've done by providing 16 diameter three bar and all these things from safety point I've done. I will try to play with the economy. That is very, I know the logic that from here, the bending moment is negative. When the bending moment is negative, it has nothing to do with the sagging moment. So that is top steel already I've provided. So here I'm going to do the curtailment. That is why this is called as curtailment length. So that is why whenever we see the drawing, you'll mention you the distance that is from the support you have to leave 350 mm and do the curtailment up to here. You don't have to run this bar throughout in the same way from this support, you have to leave a distance of 325 mm and you do the curtailing. I mean, you start the bar from here or end the bar up to this distance. So this is called as curtailment bar, right? The logic is very simple. The sagging moment is dominant only in this portion. From here, it will be uh, your uh, uh, negative bending moment. So we don't need to provide top steel here. We need, I mean, we need to provide top steel here. This additional bar is not required. In order to save the steel and to make the uh, structure economical, will try will not give the full length if you are giving the full length there is no uh, there is no problem at all but again you are increasing the cost of the structure uh, which is not uh, you know good thing to do yeah so this was the logic behind that and uh, yeah uh, there is one more thing to understand that is uh, what i what i told you in the previous class that is uh, practically this is not how we do this is not how we give the reinforcement this was just an overview overview what i have given you but practically we take the value from the e tabs and from the stat pro and based on that we'll try to do that anyhow we'll try to see that in the next lecture we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you